Jeremy Lefebvre has an illness. He has an addiction. He is addicted to gambling. And he is sorry for all the massive losses that you have suffered over the past year and a half, two years, buying the same stocks that he did. But ladies and gentlemen, he is now going back to his blueprint. He is going to stop buying unprofitable stocks. He is going to focus on profits and long-term investing. And his gambling addiction is being reversed. It's at an end. <laughs> he did it again, ladies and gentlemen. He did it again. And this time, his offense is even worse than buying tattoo trucker, sweaty, putrescent, shark covered, poop stained nutsack. Let's watch a clip of this video, and Jeremy's gonna explain what he's doing now to protect downside risk because he thinks the market is gonna go down now. So he bought a very inter interesting instrument that I think is going to blow up in his face, but we'll see. Let's listen to the wisdom of Jeremy Lefebvre. But I don't think that's going to play out. And so, but I'm at the same time, not the type of person that's going to be like, I'm, I'm dumping all my portfolio and all my stocks. So what I'm going to do is I'll protect myself through an instrument. And basically what this instrument is, it's called SDAO. And it's basically, uh, you know, kind of like a 3X against the DAO. So imagine the DAO goes down 2% a day. Then SDAO should go up uh, approximately 6% in a day. Okay, so he's buying an inverse 3x leveraged ETF. First of all, Jeremy, why do you need to protect yourself from the downside risk? Why didn't you do this, number one, when you first bought Tattoo Trucker Sweaty Shark Covered Nutsack stock, or Smile My Fart Pile, or Honest My Bonus? Why didn't you buy this protection with this gambling ETF way back in the day? But now he wants to protect himself. If you're a long-term investor, why do you need to protect yourself, okay? If you're buying this garbage and you're paying fees, you're probably, the net benefit of protecting yourself is probably not there. And on top of that, like I said, if you're a long-term investor, who cares if your stocks go down in the short term? You think I give a crap if VT goes down? You think if VT goes to 50 bucks over the next couple of months? You think I would care? No, I would be happy. I would literally buy more. But I don't need to buy a triple leveraged inverse Dow ETF to do so. So we'll keep watching and then we're going to go check out this ETF. And so basically it's just an, a 3x inverse on the Dow. So if the market tanks in a massive way, uh, SDAO it basically is going to go up in a massive way. Okay. Now, for me, since I'm looking just for protection and I'm not looking to play this for long term, I'm looking to put things on... Um, Let's just call it a, a higher level, okay? So what I went ahead and did in the past 48 hours is I bought call options on SDAO, which is a basically a bet that, and once again, this is just a hedge, right? And it's a small hedge. So just in case the market tanks, I'll, I'll make a, you know, a small fortune. Let's just call it that, okay? <laughs> so he didn't buy the underlying ETF. He bought a derivative of a 3x leverage ETF. Now, stock options, I don't know if you knew this, they're highly, highly, highly volatile, okay? They, wh whatever happens to an ETF or an underlying security, usually the stock option is gonna move around way more because it's a derivative. He bought call options on an inverse ETF, okay? And it looks like they expire in January of tw uh, 2024. Now, everybody is probably lauding Jeremy today because it looks like the stock market's down. I, know, I checked for like half a second. I don't care. But the stock market's down. So this and his call options are probably up. But let's go look at the long-term performance because these call options expire in 2024. Let's see the long-term performance of this ETF. Here it is. So over the past five years, it's basically had random spikes that are very brief, very brief. And then for the rest of the time, it absolutely collapses. So Jeremy LaFufu is going to have to perfectly time one of these massive freaking spikes. And the funny thing is, I mean, you look at the past year. Okay, the market's down, 
but this thing, it seems like, hasn't moved in tandem with the downside of the market. If the market's down 30%, this thing is basically flat. I mean, shouldn't this thing be at the moon? What's going on here? Well, you go ahead and you read the prospectus, right? And basically, this thing is designed to be traded. Look at this, compounding risk. The fund has a single day investment objective and the fund's performance for any other period is a result of its return for each day compounded over the period. The performance of the fund for periods longer than a single day will very likely differ in amount and possibly even direction from three times the inverse of the daily return of the index. And that makes sense. I mean, looking at this over the year, if the market has absolutely tanked over the past year, shouldn't this thing be up massively? But that's not how it worked. This is what Jeremy's buying call options on, okay? And if you bought call options after the market has already went down, okay, it's down 4%. This ETF is down 4%. <laughs> it's down. It should be up. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Okay? And look at some of the risks. You may lose the full value of your investment within a single day because not only is this a triple leveraged ETF, it moves at 3x the... Uh, opposite direction of the underlying index he's buying call options on this which adds an additional level of volatility you can get absolutely annihilated with this thing okay and the absolute the returns of this thing i mean look at all these scenarios that lay out okay if the <laughs> it looks like the vast majority of the time you might get lucky you might get lucky and make an absolute fortune look at this you know you, you, i guess your best rate of return over a year would be 1,300%. But you could also more likely lose 99% of your investment. Look, look at this. More likely you're going to lose massive sums of money than you're going to make anything. He's literally, this is like a, a, a gambling game. He's like throwing something on the board because we don't know where the market's going to go. So you see this chart right here. He's just throwing a dart and wherever it lands is going to be his return. But most likely... It's going to be negative. He's going to lose money. And because he's buying call options, he's going to lose eventually probably 100% of his investment. He's such an idiot. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay, Jeremy. Yeah, you're, you're really overcoming your gambling addiction. Look at this. Annual returns as of December 31st. Every year, this thing has gone down. Every single year. So if you're buying a call option because you believe the price is going to be different in a couple of years or down the road, you're probably betting the wrong thing, okay? You're probably betting in the wrong direction. This thing is hot trash. Look at that performance. You don't even need to be a genius to understand. You probably shouldn't buy a triple leveraged inverse ETF that is designed to be held for a day, basically. And you definitely shouldn't buy it using call options, which are even more volatile. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. So yeah, Jeremy, your options are up today. But what happens if the market goes up tomorrow? What if we have another event that sends stocks up 5% in a day like we had recently? You're going to get annihilated. <laughs> oh, Jeremy. Oh, Jeremy. You just you can't stop. You went from buying tattooed trucker sweaty nutsack to buying triple leverage ETFs through call options. Oh, my God. He's getting worse. He's getting worse. <laughs> anyway, Jeremy, thanks for the content. I appreciate it. Everybody have a wonderful day. Cheers.